Wanna play? Huh. Freeze! Let's have some fun, shall Hold we? The there is no escape! I see everything! Rain of bullets! Sure. Got this. <laughs> Let's Shine do down. Hey. Stick around. Where is this away? Jumpy, jumpy, go! Pew! La la la! Illusion shattered. Stabilize. This is order. Inazuma shines eternal. Grow, 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 burn them all up. Strike like storm. I will have order. To oblivion! One is fast on one. This 
is ordered. Gather! Illusion shattered! Yeah! Skyward! <laughs> Solidify! Shine down! Jumpy Jumpy Cone! Scatter! Skyward! Make way! There is no escape! Now you shall perish! Order guide you. Stabilize. Shine down. Skyward. There is no escape. Solidify. Skyward. Scatter. Seize the sky. Inazuma shines eternal. Shine down. been waiting for you for ages. Curiosity deserves a reward. <laughs> Traveler? Paimon? Kanich! Fancy meeting you here! We've actually been looking for you. I'll get straight to the point. I hear you accepted a proposal from Elder Trinidad. Oh, the, uh, Turnfire Knight, you mean. Uh, you were still his first choice, it's just... Chill, it's cool. I only mention it because there's something you should know. And I suspect Elder Trinidad hasn't been completely forthcoming with you. Once and for all? You mean... That's right. He wants to use you to send the Mountain King to the... The Night Kingdom? To his death. Whoa, 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 are you serious right now? You shouldn't go blurting out- Too blunt? Uh, there is potentially a possibility- But that's ridiculous! He told us the mountain- And that glory comes at a price. Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even the- Ah, uh, yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Mm-hmm. She likely won't be the last to lose her life, either. Still, is killing the Mountain King really the 
only way? It seems so ex- The Mountain King is a unique case when it comes to abyssal contamination. It's eaten away at him for so long that it has consumed him entirely. That evil power has both driven him insane and kept him alive over the centuries. So to look at it one way, once it's completely purged from his body, in past ceremonies we've only purged around half of the abyssal power, this was to strike a balance. To keep him alive, but also keep him asleep. Trinidad didn't say anything about how much power he wanted us to purge, but he did say there were some more details to go over before the ceremony. Then it sounds like you'll know for sure soon enough. If he really asks us to kill the Mountain King, what should we do? I know this must come as quite a shock, so I suggest you act like you didn't hear anything for now. But would you have time to visit the Chief? I'd like to make a deal. What kind of deal? One that comes at a very reasonable price. I'm sure you have plenty of other questions, but we can talk more later. Good. Mighty Outlanders, you have... It was... Uh... Glad to hear it. Things are progressing very smoothly on my end. Many of the elders have heard of your heroic deeds, including the chief. They all speak very favorably. There are still those who insist that the ceremony should be performed by the bearer of the Malipo name. <laughs> but they're just stuck in the... Pa Plus, Kamish doesn't want to do it anyway. Exactly. Mm. So, now... It's time for us to dis- We covered the fire lighting part of the proceedings yesterday. The next part is the purification of the Mountain King. It's quite simple. You just need to use the sacred flame. We've done it plenty of times before, and it's always very routine. I'm sure- One point I'd like to stress, though, is that you need to burn away as much of the abyssal energy as you possibly can. The more we dispel, the longer- Asleep, huh? Precisely. In previous years, the flame bearer has often been unable to dispel a sufficient amount of abyssal energy. That's the only reason why we have to perform the ceremony on a regular basis. But I understand that you have a lot of experience fighting against the abyss, and you seem to wield the sacred flame quite effortlessly yesterday. With your help, I'm optimistic this time we can dispel all the remaining abyssal energy. Traveler? So, this doesn't phase you at all, huh? Are you That's all you really need to know? The ceremony's in three days? In the meantime, feel free to take a look around our settlement. It would meet. And if you wouldn't mind helping them out with a few errands here and there, that would be... So now we have extra errands to run? Maybe we should add a little extra to the prep. Ha <laughs> Just a humble suggestion, that's all. It will help you gain the respect of our people. And as a mighty hero, I truly believe that's what you deserve. I'll be sticking around for the next few days, so if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Seems like Kanich was right. We should go meet up with him right away. You're here. Kanich! Elder Trinidad said that- I can tell. Is that the Traveler and Paimon? Uh, forgive me for not being there to welcome you on your arrival. Hello, Chief Waina. 
I only heard the news from Trinidad yesterday, so I asked Kenich to invite you up. <laughs> I believe Kenich has already filled you in, so I'll get straight to the point. Firstly, however, I would like to request that you take steps to ensure that every child of our tribe grows up hearing the tales of our heroes. From Yupanki, the Firebringer, to Burkina and the Mountain King, who fought. this is our history and our heritage, the source of our pride and the center of our faith. To kill the Mountain King would be to destroy our spirit. Nana's death was a great tragedy, and I do not blame Trinidad for the actions he has taken. Nevertheless, I cannot allow any harm to come to <sighs> My honored guests, please give this matter your... Uh, perhaps there is, but despite all our attempts to contain the situation over the years, we have not found it. Right now, I should like to hear where you stand on this matter. I understand. There are still three days left before... So, Kenich, earlier you were... Let's walk and talk. I'll show you around... That works, too. Paimon needs to get some air after this. why you turned Trinidad down. You knew what he was planning, didn't you? That's why you didn't want to be the flame bearer that- Double-edged sword is right. But my response wasn't merely an excuse. To solve this exceptional problem, and I'm working on it. Really? Well, come on then, let's- In a moment. Didn't you have- Oh, yeah. What was it again? Oh, right. We need to talk about how he's completely unhinged. I agree that he has a problem. He needs discipline. You got him a teacher? Oh, Paimon would love to see- Anyway, moving on. When we ran into a how, he said you two were investigating some abyss thing together. Yes, that's the angle I've been working on. I'm a Saurian hunter, but I occasionally hunt the abyss too. One time I was pursuing some purple demonic dogs when I accidentally entered a hidden space. I did some research after the fact. Apparently they're known as beastly rifts, and there are many of them of all different sizes. That's where those purple dogs were coming from. So... So, if we can locate one of these beastly rifts, clear the monsters out, and move the Mountain King inside, he'd be able... Whoa, that sounds kind of crazy. It's not without its risks, of course. There's a lot of unknowns in the equation. For instance, for all we know, a prolonged period inside the rift could make the mountain... Still... We desperately need something like this, even just as a temporary measure. You've seen the conflict the issue is causing in our tribe for yourselves, and believe the chief is adamant about keeping the Mountain King alive. I can understand. It's less about the Mountain King and more- Yes, but on the flip side, you've got people like Elder Trinidad, who is more concerned about protecting the people he cares about now, and he has every right to take that view. It's one thing to try and preserve the last remnants of a glorious past, but making your kin pay the price for it? No one can seriously tell them that's a fair trade. You're right. There's no easy answers here. Let's leave that to one side for a moment and assume we go with your plan. How do you actually intend to find one of these beastly rifts? Because at least in our experience, the dogs open the rifts when they want to attack us, not the other way around. I think I know a way. You have any better ideas? Not at the moment, but it just feels like using the power of the Abyss for our own ends isn't going to end well. After all, the Abyss is what turned the Mountain King into a monster in the first place. People are going to... If it doesn't end well, then that's the price we pay. Everything in the world comes at a price. Even when Yuponki, the Firebringer, stole the Turnfire, it cost him dearly. The Mountain King's erratic outbursts have brought tensions within the tribe to a boiling point. Unless this gets resolved quickly, everyone will be stuck in a stalemate. Alright, so what's this 
nice deal you wanted to make with us. All I need you to do is keep people away. I'm getting harassed on a daily basis by people trying to convince me to be the flame bearer. I can't afford to wait if you help me out. Ooh, what kind of- Something well worth your while, I'd say. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Integrate yourself with the tribes people, so everyone comes to terms that way. I won't have an endless stream of people coming to beg me to join the ceremony, and I can f then, when the day of the ceremony comes. That sounds pretty crazy. Even for a daredevil like you, that's dangerous. And even if it works, what if neither Chief Lina nor Elder Trinidad are happy with it? At least the two of them would finally be on the same side of the issue. Leaving only me. The tribe needs leaders like them far more than a Saurian hunter for hire like me. <laughs> Can I take that to mean that we- For sure. And who knows, maybe we'll come up with an even better solution- Great. Well, for the next couple of days, please spend some time among the tribe and lend a hand wherever you can. I'm sure every- Good luck to us both. Astra app. Thank you for comp. Add Astra.
sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? the day. Meet the tribe's people and take some heat off of Kanicha's back. Oni, how can you call the me- Because he hurt a lot of people. Wasn't on purpose. The Mountain King is sick, that's all. He's that's true. But the fact remains that he's now a threat to all of us. How can you be so harsh to someone who's sick? <sighs> if you don't take back what you just said. Hoba, Huni, what's wrong? Huni's saying nasty things about the Mountain King. Hmm. Once upon a time, maybe, but not anymore. <sighs> Yesterday, maybe, but not anymore. Toba? Oh, fine. I guess my dad is right. Things change, and you as of today, our friendship is over. There's no... Oh, come on! Cut it out, you two! We have... The Traveler is gonna be the flame bearer for the next turn fire night. What? Really? So that's what my dad wanted to talk to you? To be fair, from what we saw the other day, you are pretty good at climbing cliffs. Probably just as good as Kanich. Wait. Speaking of Kanich... Oh, yeah. Good question. We can get him to come. But if he catches you two fighting again, he won't be happy. No! We can't let that happen. I've never even spoken to him before. I can't... I didn't mean to argue with Toba. All he said was that the Mountain King has done some pretty bad things. He was... Yeah! If you weren't friends, there's no way Toba would have come to look for the baby Saurians with you. <sighs> All right. Well... Because it's the Traveler and Paimon and Kanich. I'm sorry, Toba. I'm sorry for all the mean... Dad just really misses Nana. And I was really upset that she's gone, too. Huh? Oh. Uh, I shouldn't have spoken to you the way I did, either. That's more like it. Now you're best friends I Guess so. Toba, if I ever say something mean about the Mountain King in the future, I'll make sure I'd better go buy some colored cloth for my dad now. He needs it for turn fire night. Let's play again some... See you, Toba. See you, Traveler and Paimon. Okay. I'll head home as well. Okay, take care, you two. <sighs> Even though they said they're sorry, it looks like their friendship isn't as strong as it was before. Hmm. Let's just hope we can solve this once and for all. Come on, let's move on! Rehearsal for the Turnfire Night dance. Ooh, there's a dance involved? Kind of. You don't know it? Ah, I guess you're not from these parts, huh? Uh, why do you say that? 
Because of the turn fire night, of course. The Mountain King could wake up at any time. That's why we're holding an emergency ceremony. This isn't one of those fun and games festivals. For outsiders, it might even be a little dangerous. Well, did you know that the flame bearer this time is actually gonna be? Oh, I did hear about that. It's a first for sure. What? Oh, it's you? Man, it's funny. I was just thinking that I'll probably miss out on meeting the new flame bearer since I'm not taking part this time around. Um, you're not taking part in the turn fire night? How come? You're not an outsider too, are you? <laughs> Not bad, right? Yeah, I'm considered one of the better looking guys who dances beneath the pillars of the sacred flame. Been doing it a few years. Oh, very impressive. Well, I feel like the whole Mountain King situation is getting more and more precarious. It's just not safe here anymore. One of our, the question is, what are we gonna do about this in the long term? But our leaders don't have any answers for us. They're probably, the way things are going, it's only a matter of time before it gets violent. So I figured, you know what? Now's as good a time as any to get away for a little while. Go do some exploring. You look a little disappointed. Disappointed? Nah, it's a great opportunity to go see the world. As every male scion of the canopy knows, wherever you are and wherever you go, the only way is forwards. We take pride in that. I won't forget my roots. <laughs> I managed to get in touch with the Saurian Relics Association. They gave me a simple test. Fa What's the Saurian relic? You've never heard of it? It's a group of amateur history enthusiasts who do research on the ancient Saurian era. They're all about collecting relics and remnants. Speaking of which, the guy who was Flamebearer before you. I've heard that his Saurian buddy comes from that time. A how? A how's a relic from a- Oh, yeah, him. So you know the- Then do you know how they met? It was deep inside some mysterious ruin, and they signed a contract there. The association folks say that the kind of contract usually comes with a huge hidden cost. Really? That sounds ominous. Who knows? But if it's true, Kanich can probably handle it. He knows what he's doing with weighing up contracts and costs and stuff. I doubt he'd make a contract that doesn't benefit him. Strangely enough, I actually happened upon a strange mural a while back, and it looked- Oh, does that count as a relic then? You bet it does. I was all ready to go take a pic, but after all the abyssal activity recently, I heard that area's been overrun by monsters. The best laid plans, huh? I'll d or... You look like you- If all you need to get is a picture, that should be pretty achievable, right? The Traveler deals with monsters all the time, it's a pe Wait, you're seriously gonna help- Come on, it's no big deal. Compared to some of the things we've been roped into before, this is nothing. Pyro Archon above. You two have hearts of gold, you know that? You're the kind- Of course it is! All right, come with me. Oh, well, watch your footing. Uh, in the sky, too, all right. <laughs> There it is. It's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. Alrighty then. Stay back and take cover, Tiago. This could get dangerous. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm... Gather! Illusion shatter!
Everyone hold hands! I will have order! Shine down! Blazing delight! Jumpy Dumpty Go! Boing Boing Boom! Solidify! Torn to oblivion! <sighs> that should be the last of them. It's a good... Hey, look! That's gotta be it, right? Definitely looks like a... Hmm, true. Now that you mention him, it does match the story he told us, though. There's a Saurian, and a human, so... Is that supposed to be when... Eh, whatever. We're not here. That's a wrap. Let's take it back to Tiago. You've been robbed? Oh, Pon... Oh, I put blood, sweat, and tears into that. And now I've got no... Tiago, is this the picture you were looking for? Let me take a look. Uh, hey, Ponche, come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers. <laughs> Wait, are you... Huh? You... I... My nephew Toba's been telling everyone about you. He says you're crazy strong, super friendly, that you helped him out, and that you're gonna... Oh, so you're Toba's uncle. Sounds like we managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. <laughs> Toba's not wrong, my friend. These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Everyone speaks incredibly highly of them. Seriously. If you're comfortable telling them about what happened, I guarantee you they'll sort it out in no time. Really? All I want is to get the fruit. Allow me to explain. Ponche is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, Yupanki's Turnfire. Unfortunately... I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last... On the word Malipo alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. And now it's all gone. That little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all of my belongings and- That book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old stu- See what I mean, Ponche? Now you've run into these two? I don't know if he's still there, but come on, I'll take you.
Hey! You... you... thieving rat! Give me... <sighs> what do you want now, you old bum? God, you're a waste of space. Prepare to get shoved but... Oh, what's this? Brought a little bodyguard with you, huh? Eat dirt, suckers! Hey, he's trying to get away! You good? Let's chase him down! didn't have a single Mora in it. All that time lying in wait was for- Hmm. Is that really the truth? Okay. The same place you found me. Look, I swear on the Pyro Archon, it's the truth. May all my worldly possess- Okay, that's a pretty strong- What do we do now? It sounds like he's telling the truth. Right. Let's hope nobody gets to the book before we- Although the Turnfire is a heroic symbol in Hoitzitlan, it always comes with the more ominous implication of eventual tragedy. This holds true for all bearers of this ancient name in recorded history. Each one of them died of non-natural causes. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. None can escape this payment, unless, perhaps, they could honestly swear by Turnfire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. You punkies Turnfire. What an incre- Let me see, the author is... Uh, silence, book muncher! The great Kahula Hal will suffer your drowning vo- Do you truly find no joy at all in perusing such rich historical records? <laughs> joy? What joy is there in this pointless drivel? Well, it makes a pretty shocking prediction. Every bearer of the ancient name Malipo eventually meets a grisly end. What? Hmm, you're saying Kenichi will die a violent death? <laughs> so I'll finally get to... When? When will that glorious day arrive? The great ghoul how to... Wow, you are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. You make us Abyss Order folks look like saints in comparison. Uh, silence, maggot! To presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Kahulahau is sheer vanity! And if that day ever comes, oh, your doom will soon follow. <laughs> you don't need to lecture me about doomsday. Here's what I know. All civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms to heavenly thrones to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. But from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will rise and never settle, thus transcending the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization's spirit. And you, great Kahul Ahau, are one such speck of dust from a bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance. Now, let me t- We're so sorry, Mr. Ponche, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean? You gotta stay positive, Ponche. You might have lost the book, but the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main- The whole reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the Turnfire Night is because I hoped that maybe it might 
Help us find a way through these trying to- Well, not exactly. But I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh, really? So what did you find I think the key to all of this lies in- Panche, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. You're right, but Malipo may be a special case. Given that it first arose in the era of the first Pyro Archon, it might contain- Yeah, I remember that story. My grandpa told it to me when I was a little kid. Maybe you're the special case. Most kids stop believing in that stuff by your age. I'm not talking about childhood superstitions. Like what? Like the fact that the Mountain King is still alive. Everyone attributes that to the power. The key factor is that Burkina summoned the power of Malipo at the cost of his own life. If you don't believe me, then answer me this. How many other creatures can you think of who lived longer, not shorter, after being contaminated by the Abyss? Um, Traveler, different situation but similar idea. Doesn't this- So, I came to the conclusion that Malipo must refer to some mysterious ritual involving a tit-for-tat exchange. It began with the first Pyro Archon, fell with the Grand Alliance, then was- Hey, hey? <laughs> sorry to interrupt, Panche, but you seem to be getting a little overexcited. I'm sorry. I was originally planning on presenting my findings to Kanich. Sounds to me like you dreamed up one fanciful theory to support another. Uh, Kanich, what are you doing here? I more or less finished what I was doing, so I came to have a quick catch-up. Kanich! I'm onto something! I haven't worked out all the details, but... but... Uh, so Mr. Ponche here has done a lot of research on the history of the turn- I'll be there, Ponche. Let's go. Here will do. Yeah. I'd like your help giving it a trial run tomorrow. If that works, we have- Sounds like you're not considering- You heard him. He hasn't worked out the details yet. We did a more practical solution with Kong- Yet? Are you saying you think he might actually be on- I think it's possible. Based on something I know about the war 500 years ago. Burkina didn't fall to the abyss. He was killed by the Mountain King in an episode of madness. In his final moments, Burkina made the fateful decision to not fight back, and instead pass his blood and power on to the Mountain King. Maybe he thought the Mountain King was stronger than him, and more valuable to the tribe. Or maybe it was- Either way, I can believe the Turnfire was involved. Whether you think his sacrifice triggered it, or his fate was sealed from the moment he took the Malipo name. How can you drop these truth bombs with such a straight face? This is what I've gleaned from my many interactions with the Mountain King. His mind is so disordered. It took some time to piece it all. The story Elder Trinidad told you was the more palatable version of events. The truth is even darker. The Mountain King's mind isn't just disordered. He is suffering and feels great shame. I believe he wants to be put- What? Then... then what should we do? Of course not. We should help him move to a new home. It's the only practical solution. The Mountain King is a hero to my tribe. An object of worship, even. Ending his life would be like desecrating a statue. Still, he's been the cause of multiple disasters, and we can't afford to have any more. Ugh. Practical solutions hurt Paimon's brain. Can we follow our hearts next time? <laughs> then let's break for the day.
You're here. Very punctual. Oh, so the gruesome twosome come crawling back. <laughs> here to make amends after the gross irreverence you displayed last time. <laughs> Very well. The almighty dragon lord, Kahula Howe, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Now, pucker up. <laughs> Kanich, didn't you say you found him a teacher? He's just as out of control as ever. Hey! No one gets to discipline the almighty dragon lord, Kahula Howe. No one! Maybe because I've never had a gentle-natured companion like Paimon to compare against. It... Is that a compliment? Yeah. I see what I'm missing out on now. And it's a lot. Kanich! Oh, we could drown this measly flying ant in one droplet of spit! How dare you compare her to the almighty dragon lord, Kahula Howe! Oh, just wait till I possess your dead body! I will commit heinous atrocities! Tear. Traveler, Paimon, let's get down to business. Once we've opened the beastly rift, you're welcome to toss a how in there for a couple of days. With pleasure. You don't need to ask twice. I got my hands on this device in a trade. It's meant as bait, but it'll also stabilize the abyssal energy. The rift towns will tear through space to get to this. Once they're here, we take them out and claim the rift. You'll find out soon enough. First, let's try this out. They'll tear you to pieces given half the chance, so be careful. Locked up! See, Kinich? I'm a man of my word. In fact, I'd say I underpromised and overdelivered. Nifty little gizmo, isn't it? I take it this is your true form? Now that our deal is complete, it's time to start the next phase of our relationship. I made a promise to the great cliche, I know. The hero's trusted partner sells him out to the abyss in a shocking act of betrayal. Cue bad guy speech and drawn out death sequence. Huh? Angel? Huh? Huh? What are you two doing here? Oh, Mr. Kinich, this is not what we agreed on. Traveler, this is the gift I got you. I know you're looking for intel on the Abyss Order, but it looks like you've already met. Yikes. Frosty reception. Gotta say, I kinda pictured this moment going a little differently. Tears of joy welling up in your eyes as you say the words. Don't be ridiculous. Sounds like you've been reading too many romance novels. There we have it. Change is inevitable and nothing lasts forever. What a Sanka! Aha! So you're a glasses guy! You tricked Huni and Toba into telling you a bunch of stories! What does it matter? A name is a superficial label. It's what's deep down inside that counts. And I've shown you the deepest parts of me. That would explain a lot. Why else would you show up here and start acting like a wise guy? You looking for a fight? Eh, I'll pass. I do rather like you, as I've said before. But my one quibble is that you really don't know your own strength. Wait, of course. You're the one behind all the recent Abyss activity. Let Paimon guess, you've been provoking the Mountain King too. Haven't I told you before? I'm not part of the inner circle who do our highness's bidding. My interests are far more low stakes. I spend my time digging for truth in ancient doodads and books. You really think a benchwarmer like me is capable of more than that? I investigated him. He's not connected to the recent events. Just happens to be in the area. So, I struck a deal with him. He helps me summon a rift. I allow him to do- But that's all over. And now Kinich wants to hand me over to you. 
While I was hoping this would be an opportune moment to whisk away his body, that would have given me some more time to study the great Kahula Hao. But now I've run into you, which is just my luck. Or maybe I've incited the wrath of the Turnfire, and this is the pro- Wait, does that count? Uh, how? You are the worst of the worst! Colluding with the Abyss Order against Kanich? How can- Uh, there is no betrayal! The almighty Dragon Lord Kahula Hao is a partner to no one! Don't worry, I told him to act as bait. Yes, and you should have picked a bigger fish! The Abyss Order? Ha! What a joke. Not even a match for our lowly servant. I put up with this toad croaking for days, and it was all for nothing! It looks like your disciplinary measures have been less than effective, Mr. Enjo. Uh, what did you expect? Behavioral rehab isn't really our thing. Otherwise, we might as well change our name from the Abyss Order to the Abyss Boarding School. The abysmal disorder would suit you better. Uh, Kanish! Dispose of him! He is a- Traveler? Hey now, I may be a lowly clerk, but I could never beat you in a straight-up fight. But when it comes to running away, I won't lose to anyone! Do me a favor. And remember how fast I disappeared. Darn! He got away again! It's alright. He's not worth our time and energy. Besides, it seems like he's in debt to a lot of people. I'm sure they'll keep him <sighs> If you say so. Still, Paimon's kinda surprised that you actually struck a deal with someone from the Abyss Order! To borrow that guy's words, names are superficial labels. Whether you call it the Abyss Order or anything else, it's a broad generalization at best. Think of it like apples that have fallen from a tree. If you tasted each one, you'd find that they're all at different stages of ripening. Even the unripe fruit blown off its branch before it's fully grown can still be brewed into a fine wine. Everything has its use. Huh. Well, in that specific sense, maybe Enjo's not such a bad apple. Not rotten to the core, at least. Of course! Only the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahula Howe, is rotten to the core, and evil beyond redemption! Ugh. So what exactly are you anyway? You're definitely the evilest little thing Paimon's ever met! Don't worry, he can't hurt a fly. Hmm, you could say that. Uh, Paimon heard that those kinds of contracts might come with a terrible cost attached. Such as... a how watching me like a ravenous vulture? Vulture? Vulture! Ugh, we are the Dragon Supreme! Let's pick this up another time. It's getting kinda late. You should go back and get some rest. Big day ahead. Tomorrow's Turnfire Night. Time to light the sacred flame and burn away the filth for a legendary 500-year-old warrior. Oh yeah. Hearing you lay it out like that is making Paimon a little nervous. For all the work we've put in, it all comes down to tomorrow night. We have to make- Then it can't hurt to say this one more time. Good luck to us both. See you tomorrow. What happened to getting some rest? You're cautious, like me. I get it. But don't worry, like I said, I investigated, and I'm c- Before he got tangled up with us, he was looking into the Mare Javari. That's another major part of Natland's history. Our ancestor, Burkina, once fought a campaign there alongside the five other heroes. But it's not such an easy place to get to these days. That's about all I know, though. I have yet to take a job that involves the Mare Javari. What happened to getting some rest? <laughs> the house piqued your interest, huh? It's true that he's a relic from an earlier Saurian age, but since we're bound to each other by a contract, you can see him as my companion. I know he can be awful, but don't worry. As long as I'm still around, he can't do that much. Mm hmm. That's a key part of the contract. The Howe has to obey my orders and lend me his power for as long as I live, and after I die, a Howe gets control of my body. Th crazy, isn't it? That was probably the first time I really appreciated what it meant to pay a price. Then once I saw- but that's a whole other story. We can get in-
10 points for agility. Get acquired. Points for agility. Don't get too close. Supporting fire. Uh, Boba, get them. Hey, Pull an Amba. Help! Fly. Claim these souls. The dead. Dragon. Ah. Locked on. Fire it up!
Dad asked. Thank you for comp. You might want to get a guide if you're not familiar with the area. Ah, at long last, you're back. I hear you've done much for our people these last few days. Every Many young people have heard the rumors, too. They're all eager to meet our new flame bearer. Well, they won't have to wait for long. It's almost time for the ceremony. We really hope we can resolve the Mountain King situation quickly and smoothly. Things like... <laughs> well, it's nearly time. So, if you're ready, then follow me to the ceremony site. Of course, there's no... Ha! Ah, we'll be a traveling magic troupe. Are you ready? Here we are. 
Our honored guests have arrived. I have heard much about your fine work over the past few days. Don't worry about it. Getting this huge venue ready must have been a huge task. No need to make extra work for yourselves on our account. Oh, if it means getting the Mountain King issue resolved, no cost is too... A resolution will come in due course, but every great fire starts as a tiny spark. No one would disagree with you if that were possible, Chief, but it's been far too long since we've seen a real... Look around you. Can't you see how our numbers have dwindled since... The ceremony was arranged on short notice. Many are away from home and could not make it back in time. That may be so. Good evening, Traveler in Paimon. Kanich! Not a moment too soon. Chief Wayna, Elder Trinidad, could you give us a minute? I'd like to give the Traveler a few pointers as the previous flame... Uh, very well, but make it quick. Let me know when you're done and... Let's step to the side. Has anyone gone over the... key? Yeah, Elder Trinidad did, but, uh, Paimon seems to have forgotten them. What a surprise! The flying ant has an ant-sized brain. If you don't want your tongue to be burned off by the sacred flame tonight, I suggest you stay quiet. <sighs> See those sacred flame pillars? Once you've lit the fire, go light each one up in turn. Once that's done, head down into the cave where the Mountain King slumbers, light the braziers along the way, then bring the flame to the final altar. Then the ceremony- That sounds simple enough. The process isn't complicated, but remember, you mustn't turn back at any point. If you miss a pillar, you can't light the next- You have to keep moving forward, or it's seen as disrespecting our ancestors. I made you a diagram that summarizes the steps. Take a look. So that's our part. What about- I'll be with you the whole way. And once you've lit the altar, I'll start summoning the rip. You can leave that side of things to me. Okay. We'll try to remember all that and get it right the first time. Ready when you are. But I think I saw Hooney and the others just now. Maybe you should just tell the chief when you're ready. Oh, Miss Traveler! You look so pretty today! again, right? I believe in you. I'll be cheering you on the whole time. What are you doing? I'm counting on you. By past fuel and present flame, life marches ever on. My brothers and sisters, the time has come to light the fire once again and let the turn fire night shine bright in Hoitzitlan. Go get the sacred flame. Nicely done. Off to a good start.
Great stuff. You're over halfway. Keep it up. Impressive. Just one more to go. Come on, one last push. The final sacred flame pillar is up ahead. Great! All the pillars are alight. Next, it's down into the canyon and head for the Mountain King's cave. Almost there. The cave is just up ahead. This presence is growing strong. We should deal with the contamination first. There's the altar of the sacred flame. Remember, light up the torches around it first.
Mountain King up ahead, right? That's him. Kangamato, king of the Yumkasaurs from 500 years ago. He's very powerful. Paimon can tell. He's huge! Let's tread carefully! You've made it at last! You did even better than I expected. Traveler, now comes the final and most important step of the ceremony. Please, you- There's no need this time. Hmm? Such strong abyssal power! What is- Kinich? What is the meaning of this? Is that a beastly- Chief Wyna, Elder Trinidad, this is about to- What do you think you're doing? Solving the Mountain King issue. You mean, by having him torn to peace? No, stop! Foolish locust! Uh, can't you see? We're trying to shove your locust king into the beastly rift! Uh, but- I'm sorry, Chief Wyna and Elder Trinidad. This is the only- Can you promise me that no harm will- I can't guarantee it, but I'm fairly confident. Traveler, this is not what we agreed on. You must cleanse the Mountain King of every last trace of abyssal content. Okay, I see what this is. You've been in cahoots- Ugh, you imbecile! What have you done?! Oh no! You forced my hand. Elder Trinidad! No! The Mountain King is waking up! Everyone! Out! Now! It seems there is only one way to awaken you all from your willful blindness. More sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Take me, O oh Mountain King! Take me as your next sacrifice! Everyone's still outside. We have to keep the Mountain King here. Give me a hand! Watch out for the fruits he's spitting out. I can use those against him. Yeah, that's it!
Points at launch, shame! <sighs> By past fuel and present flame, life marches ever on. Oh, Burkina, I must atone. Patience. We will answer to the fire for all our deeds. Even if one day I fall behind, never look back. Keep moving forward, as we are now. Live with your guilt and shame. This is the price to pay. Heir to the turn fire, please use my ruined vessel to train the heroes of the future. The will of Kongamato will march ever on till the abyss is stamped out. Pretty eventful day yesterday, huh? Lyman wonders how things are doing now. Let's go ask the chief! Traveler, you've come at just the right time. I have some good news for you. Trinidad's condition is stabilized. He suffered burns on much of his body, but we believe he'll survive. Guess that's the best news we could hope for. Uh Kenich, then Elder Trinidad? Is this the Scions of the Canopy's adventurous spirit in action? We're simply not afraid to charge ahead into the unknown. He's fine. Don't worry. He's gone to check on the Mountain King. Something most mis- After the incident yesterday, a transparent shell is formed around the Mountain King's body. We don't understand the mechanism behind it, but the shell appears to insulate him against the influence of abyssal power. It is somewhat akin to a scab, in that it stops the abyssal energy within him from bleeding out, while also preventing further... We've never seen anything like it. The tribe's most senior elders believe it was caused when he was burned by the sacred flame. Similar to the way burned wood becomes... I think their theory makes sense. After all, we've never thrown the Mountain King directly into the sacred flame before. Wow. So it's made a barrier against abyssal energy? It's practically a miracle from what we've seen of it so far. It means that the Mountain King's level of abyssal energy is now stable. No longer will we need to perform an annual cleanse. Wow, that's amazing! I know what you're thinking. The young people in the tribe are already speculating that yesterday's ceremony was a turnfire night like none other. Because you and Kenich, you summoned the very flame that appears in our ancient legends. A great transparent, and that fire is what saved the- Real Turnfire? <laughs> I may be the chief of this tribe, but I've only ever known the Turnfire as a concept in our legends. I cannot answer that question. If anyone can answer it, I suspect it would be the bearer of the Malipo name. He is in the Mountain King's cave as we speak. Ah, so can each then. Why don't we go see how he's doing? Hey, Kenich! Hey, yourselves. <laughs> you two doing okay after- We were gonna ask you the same question. You scared Paimon half to death when you rushed into the fire! Sorry. 
I couldn't just stand and watch the Mountain King get burned alive. So you thought you'd try and extinguish the sacred flame with Dendro? Or is that an attempt to make the almighty Dragon Lord Kahulahau die of laughter? <sighs> the sacred flame only possesses a fraction of the Pyro Archon's power. It's not as if I was fighting the Pyro Archon herself. Kanich, when you went into the flames, were you- Intending to what? To... um... do this- Sacrifice myself? Of course not. My focus was on keeping the Mountain King alive, but now I'm curious. What made you- Well, because everyone's saying the Turnfire is what saved the King life, and Ponche's theory was that summoning the Turnfire is a tit-for-tat exchange, right? So, Paimon- So you've heard that rumor. I'm afraid I can't say for sure. What happened- Well, even if you don't know, there's probably no one in the- What I would say is, if that really was the power of the Turnfire, I'd sooner believe that the Mountain King summoned it himself. The Mountain King? Then... The core meaning of price is not atonement or compensation, but what you're willing to give up in order to obtain what you want. It's easy to die for your sins. Much harder to live with the guilt and keep on going. In the end, the Mountain King chose the latter option. For Burkina and for the tribe. That's the price he... Alright, so... Health-wise, there's nothing to worry about. He'll enter a fighting stance whenever we set foot in his territory. But his attacks are gentler now and not as crazed as before. Like he said yesterday, he just intends to be a sparring partner for people to practice with. Yeah, I tried communicating with him again, but he didn't respond. <laughs> we dare say that Locust King has well and truly lost its mind. The lights are on, but nobody is home. Its body remains fighting fit thanks to the perverse power of the Abyss. But time has been less kind to its soul. It was ground to a pulp. But we saw him come back to his senses yesterday. That was merely one last burst of brain activity before it croaked. As you humans would say, it went out with a bang. At least it means my fellow tribes people can move forward now, too. Th yeah, that's right. You caught Enjo for us. But he ended up being completely useless. It's not- Ah, oh, that's on him. It's not your fault he's useless. Besides, we're friends now. You don't know us anything. Friends? <laughs> but your friendship is an even more valuable gift. I can't in good conscience accept it for free. So, promise me. If you need anything in the future, you'll come to me. For you? I'll do anything. And only poor little Hooney got the sad end. Yeah, everyone's happy except me. First Nana, then my dad. Why does everyone in my family have to suffer? Hooney, it'll be okay. Toba, you're my friend, so I shouldn't say this to your face. But it was all the- Huh? Now hold your horses, kiddo. Okay, before you roll your eyes out of your skull, I promise you can trust me. I almost got my eyebrows burned off by the turn fire after last time. All right, I'll just get to the point. Do you know- uh, what? Your extreme sports. Huh? On my first day here, 
I got hit by someone falling out of the sky. I believe you call it bungee jumping? It's a dangerous sport to be sure, but the courage it took to make the jump impressed the heck out of me. So, I introduced- Oh, such a nice- Of course. Anyway, the good times didn't last, because I got captured by a powerful foe, so we had to part ways for a while. In the hands of the enemy, I was scorned, scolded, and nearly given away as a gift. Why does Uncle Sanka always have to suffer, I thought. So I f But in the end, I made it through, and I left all of those painful memories in the past. I even managed to reunite with my f- Uh, is that it? The moral of the story is to look forward in life, right? Yeah, we've heard- Very smart, Hoonie. What I'm trying to tell you is that after I reunited with my friend, I found her in- She's right behind you. Another trick about not turning back? Huh? Bombs, so heavy. Something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one. 